All right, guys, today I received the main board in the mail that Will and RC Groups donated, and um, I set the dip switches to the OSD configuration, and I went ahead and checked everything out. It seemed fine, so I flashed the firmware and uh, went to version 1.5 with MWOSD firmware, and it seemed to flash fine. Uh, can't talk to the flight controller because the flight controller is completely burned out on the board, but it seemed to look, you know, like it, it worked, and this is what it looks like. You can't see the firmware version. Um, no data. It's just not talking to the flight controller because the flight controller is burned out. So, looks promising. Uh, as of right now, it's still... I don't really know what to expect, but I assume strongly that it will work. And so I'm going to go ahead and walk through flashing uh, the latest MWOSD firmware to the Vengeance, uh, you know, the Vengeance OSD board. And what you'll need to do that, you'll need this driver if you have already installed Clean Flight and um, connected to. Well, any flight controller for clean flight, basically, you've probably already installed this. But if not, you'll need to go ahead and download this driver here or whatever one you need for your platform for Windows. Um, I'm using newer version, so I hope you are too, because otherwise this could be unpredictable. I really don't know what to expect either way. Um, Arduino, you'll need to download that as well. Uh, I'm using version 1.0.5. Um, basically, I found somewhere in another tutorial that that's the one that doesn't have any problems with flashing this firmware to this board. So that's the one I'm using, and it seemed to work fine. So that's what'll work. Um, when you go to there, you'll have to scroll down and get it down here. And I did this one. And that's just gonna be you can load you don't have to install it you'll be able to load it right out of the folder once you get it out of the zip file um, of course you'll also need MWOSD and you can get that on github um, get that there or here from this little thing and you can click download it says Google Drive can't scan this file for viruses. Download anyway, um, or you get it on GitHub. And once you have that stuff, um, let me get this out of the way. Uh, you'll download all those files, and what you'll end up with here. Um, so in MWOSD, the zip file. You'll need this folder, um, and in here you'll need whichever one for your version of Windows. Um, so you'll you'll basically take that and copy it back all the way to here and paste, and then go ahead and. Go back in there, get uh, yeah, MWOSD, copy, and then paste here. And you'll also want to do that with the Arduino. Um, I've already done it. Um, you can see here. Um, now, if you if you uh, let me get out of this one actually. I have another window. Make this a little cleaner. These are basically the uh, folders you'll need. You'll need MWOSD, which is going to have the MWOSD.ino and Arduino, and then the application, which is the GUI, MWOSD GUI. So those three basic folders there or what we're going to use to install the new firmware. Um, first thing we'll do, we'll load up Arduino. Okay, that's loading. Let me get it on screen here. Um, and then uh, you'll have to, of course, set the dip switches on the flight controller to um, the OSD settings. 
and uh, plug in. I'm putting a lipo just so that it's adequately powered. I don't know, you know, uh, my U my USB on my laptop. I don't know. It seems the lights are pretty dim when I use that. So now I'm gonna plug in USB and here in Arduino you want to go to tools and we need to make sure that the serial port is selected you probably won't have many other showing here um, so whatever one is here that's probably the one you need and then on the board you want to make sure Arduino Pro uh, Pro Mini this this option right here is selected and then um, we'll go to file and here in examples you want to go all the way down scroll down to EEPROM we're going to go ahead and clear the EEPROM okay and then you can click open and navigate to where your um, mwosd.ino file is and open it that way um, I have mine already set up so Windows will recognize it so I can go here and just open it and that'll open in its own um, Arduino window and in this window there's some tabs here and in these tabs there's some configuration definitions variables um, in config.h we need to scroll down and this one's already been changed I've already um, set it up for clean flight but you need to change this and it tells you here how um, basically uncomment this if you're using X controller so if you're going to use clean flight or base flight or whatever you want to flash to your flight controller um, get rid of the slashes in the front and then put them in front of whatever one is currently missing the slashes and you should be good to go um, that's what it'll look like and then we can just go ahead and click upload here and we'll wait a minute um, my computer is pretty slow I think it's doing something in the background um, maybe scanning viruses I don't know but it's running pretty slow right now. Alright, so it's done uploading. So we're all good here with Arduino. We can close that. We go back, and now we want to go to the application. And we're going to run mwosdgui.bat. And. As soon as that opens up, let me get that on screen. That's going to look like that. Here's COM7. That's what you'll click to connect to the OSD. And everything looks pretty good. Um, first thing you'll want to do is set a font. If you don't do this right away and you forget, later on you'll load up your... Uh, goggles and you get ready to fly and your whole your whole display will look all wonky it'll have weird characters everywhere so you have to set a, a font it, it has to be done so select the font right here and then this window here will open up and you can actually go through and check out different uh, all the different ones um, by opening them and then this little window here will pop open click OK then you can click edit font and in here it shows you all the fonts um, here you can see like ACRO that's acro mode and HOZN is horizon, or, yeah, horizon and some of the sensor ones up here they'll show you um, I guess that's accelerometer, uh, the mag magnetometer, barometer, GPS. So all these um, you can go through and change them if you want or uh, look through them. And you can uh, 
flip through, look at whatever you like. I'm going to just go ahead and select the default one and open. And again, this little pop up, okay. And like I said, I, I this one will work for me. This is this is what I'm using on my other one. So I'm going to click upload and this takes a minute, a couple minutes actually. So I'll probably just skip over this. All right, and it completed, everything looks all right. So now we can go ahead and start setting up our display. Um, first of all, this thing here is always a pain for me. I don't really know how that thing is supposed to be. Uh, it, it just, I can't get it to work right. I can't get it to three. But this thing, I, I always set this to about 214 or so somewhere in that range again this thing is kind of hard to control with the mouse I'm not sure what the deal is with that so 214 um, you can't click or type it in or anything like that so it's a little fidgety um, I do want it to display the voltage use uh, FC main voltage that I want on. Um, we're gonna do uh, no amps. I don't think I want any of this stuff. Um, call sign you can put on there if you like. Um, I'm gonna switch this to Imperial. I'm gonna do PAL because I think the camera's in PAL mode. And display throttle position, display battery status, and reset stats after arm I want on. Display flight mode display flight mode sensors I don't want the display gimbal vario I do want the barometer altitude and the timer let's see display horizon bar display horizon bar elevation I don't want the sidebars okay and then GPS no no GPS coordinates I don't want the compass this doesn't seem to toggle anything so I just leave it on um, now there's some other things you can set up um, the layouts you can actually change the layouts with a switch um, here by using an RC channel um, I'm not sure how that has to be configured in clean flight so I haven't really messed with it yet but you can set a channel and three different positions on the switch and toggle between uh, the different layouts and you can edit the layouts here by flipping through the HUDs um, there's already a bunch of them preset um, for you you can flip through and just change to those um, the default zero HUD is the one I just edited and changed and did all this to and there's some other things that you can um, enable and disable um, like a, the satellite indicator um, I don't see it's it you know I don't know there's some other I don't know which what was it the uh, there was a couple things on here that you can change well anyway you can move everything around here and put the put any anything you want just about anywhere you want um, when I find something that I want to move I'll do that hold on just a second pitch angle um, yeah I'll leave that on for now I don't I don't know that that'll be that little weird PO here I don't know what that's gonna be if it'll even show on the actual display but um, we'll see what that does uh, roll angle disabled just flip through all these real quick uh, the 
call sign. Now, if you type in the call sign uh, over here, you can put in a call sign, and it'll show on the screen right here, and you can move it wherever you like. Um, I'm going to turn that off for now because if I'm not racing, it's just going to be annoying and in my way. So. Um, that's just, you know, one of the things you can move, but I'm trying to find the mode. There it is. Mode, and I want to move that to there. Okay. Because um, on my other one, it's up there, and it gets a little blurry on the edge of my, dominator, my uh, dominator HD goggles up the edges. It's a little blurry. So, okay, so everything here looks good to me. Um... I'm going to turn that to using OSD, SW, whatever. I don't want to... I might get into doing this later, and I might do a video on that also if I do. But for now, I'll, this this setup here is fine for me, so I'm going to click write, and it will write. And then I always do read just to see what I get back and make sure it's always the same but um, it looks fine so close that and um, well now I guess we'll shut this video down and uh, see what the video looks like coming out of the uh, camera oh yeah and don't forget to switch your dip switches back to the flight mode setting Okay, so the camera view, um, I got a little glitch when I, I looked at it the first time, and I'll show you that glitch here. Everything looked fine, I could see the firmware, but then I had this little ampersand here instead of the targeting reticle that should be there. Um, so I basically just went back and reloaded the font and uploaded it again to the OSD and then tried it again and that time it worked fine um, so that time the radical loaded in fine everything worked the way it's supposed to uh, you'll see here I'll go ahead and pick up the uh, yeah movement left right up and down and you can see the horizon move even I'll, if I lift it up, um, if I can get it with the USB cord high enough, uh, it'll show here one foot and then back down. So yeah, everything's working just fine, and so I hope this helps everybody out. And thanks for watching.